I want to say my own special thank you to Cantor Marcia Addy. She is the voice and the spirit that um, just, just strengthens all of us in our community to feel that connection to God, and we love you and are so grateful to be partners together. And I also really just want to take a moment to thank Rena, Jenny, and Robert for shocking me. You know, you get to a certain age and you can't get everyone together anymore. So best gift ever. Thank you, the three of you, for being here. Good morning, Third Baptist. Here are some lines of a poem called Messenger of the Most High by our own Rabbi Larry Kushner. And so we understand that ordinary people are messengers of the Most High. They go about their tasks in holy anonymity, often even unknown to themselves. Yet if they had not been there, if they had not said what they said or did what they did, we would not be the way we are now. What I love about these words is their insistence that each one of us has a reason for being. When we think of those who really have made a difference on this earth, we, we think of the greats, including the prophet Moses, including Jesus, and including Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. When we think of what they did in human history, our efforts can feel so small. For great social justice luminaries, their every moment was dedicated to the pursuit of justice. But most of us, we have jobs we have to go to. We have families to care for and bills to pay. How can we ordinary people see the possibility that we possess the tools to be messengers of the Most High? Well, we start right here. What an honor it is to be with you today as we celebrate and recommit ourselves to Dr. King's dream of a world free from racial injustice, hatred, and prejudice. Third Baptist and Congregation Emmanuel have been engaged in this sacred partnership for over 30 years. Rabbi Jonathan and I, it's a highlight of our year to be here with you this morning and he was so disappointed that he is officiating at a funeral and he has to be where he has to be. Each time it's my turn I feel excitement, great honor, and trepidation to choose the words that let you know how much this partnership means to us, how much you mean to us. Since we came to San Francisco in 2013, Reverend Brown has partnered with us, included us, and always wowed us with his gift of oratory. Reverend Brown has been so good to Rabbi Jonathan and me. He has the best coattails in town and we are ever grateful to him and his moral leadership. We need this partnership right now. We are living in such an unreal climate, both environmentally and politically. Together we must figure out how we address that sense of despair, especially amongst many of our young people Feelings that issues are too many, too complicated, too entrenched, and too systemic that it feels hopeless. More than one young person has told me what with the trajectory of climate change, wealth disparity, racism, systematically unjust laws, guns, homelessness, 
poverty, mass incarceration, mental illness, addiction, to name a few, that it is not uncommon for young people to question whether or not they should even bring children into the world. I imagine some older people may have these feelings as well, but I also guess that the eldest among us have lived through hard times. We have studied and we have lived history. We know some things can get better. One challenge we face is the fact that so many problems all at once can overwhelm us to the point of becoming desensitized. Those fires in Australia may be an example where we all ought to be beside ourselves with anguish and grief at the loss of human life, at the loss of forests, and one billion animals consumed by flames. We hear that entire species have been wiped out. But what with all the problems that have accumulated these past years, we feel numb, empty, feeling overwhelmed and desensitized makes us feel powerless. We worry that even if we get out the vote, even if we reduce our own meat and dairy consumption, even if we buy back guns and pass bail reform measures, the problems are just too big and we are just too small. So how do we come to know that each one of us is a messenger of the Most High? Well, one answer comes from the book of Torah Jews here and all over the world started rereading yesterday, the book of Exodus. If you want to understand Jews, go read the book of Exodus. Exodus is the story of a sacred partnership between God and humans that started with 400 years of slavery and resulted in redemption and liberation. Exodus is the blueprint Jews have followed in every generation, a recognition that whenever there is a tyrant in power, it is our job to resist tyranny and tyrants and pursue justice. Each one of us is that messenger on high. We each have a purpose. The celebrities of this book of Torah are the greatest of the greats. Moses, Miriam, Aaron. But the Exodus text I want to share with you this morning reminds us that if we are not Moses, if we are not Martin, we can still resist tyranny and tyrants. Amen. Although virtually everyone remembers Moses, few recall those two everyday women who resisted tyranny their way. They are two midwives who work in Egypt, and their names are Shifra and Pua. They show up right at the start of the book of Exodus chapter 1 where we learn that a new king arose over Egypt who knew not Joseph. And he said to his people, look, the Israelite people are too numerous for us. Let us deal shrewdly with them so that they may not increase. And he goes on to imagine all kinds of untrue canards based on this fear. This pharaoh grows increasingly fearful and prejudiced against our people. And here's where Shifra and Pua come in. The king of Egypt, says the book, spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one named Shifra and the other Pua, and ordered them, as the babies come out, if it is a boy, kill him, and if it is a girl, let her live. Now this is a textbook case of power differential. The all-powerful tyrant and these lowly Hebrew midwives. But then the text goes on. The midwives, fearing God, did not do as the king of Egypt had told them. They let the boys live. I aspire 
to be Shifra, and you can be Pua. Yeah. We are not the president or the Congress or the head of the ACLU. We don't have to be. If you are a midwife, a nurse, an EMT, any kind of medical professional, you are a messenger of the Most High. If you are a teacher or a preacher or a student or a trash collector, you are a messenger of the Most High. Each one of us can find our way to fight against hate. Shifra and Pua teach us there is always a way. You don't have to be a celebrity to stand up. You don't have to be a social justice professional to raise your voice. I know it's hard. Children in cages. Australia on fire. Passenger planes shot out of the sky. Police shootings. Neighborhood shootings. Violence against Jews, violence against African Americans, violence against Muslims, violence against Hispanic people, violence against sexual minorities. Of course we are numb, but the messengers of the Most High are all around us. Your very own Dr. Amos Brown, with his sharp mind and unwillingness to stand silently by any form of injustice, Reverend Brown is a messenger of the Most High. Reverend Brown gives us hope. African Americans and Jews coming together, refusing to buy into a narrative of animosity between us, rejecting tweets and social media posts designed to divide us. Our monthly black Jewish unity group meets at the African American Arts and Culture Center, gives us hope, and you are all invited to join us the second Thursday of each month. Overcoming division gives us hope. Our shared faith in one God who loves us all the same gives us hope. Brian Stevenson and those like him demanding the redemptive power of mercy. These warriors for justice, he is a messenger of the Most High. Brian Stevenson gives us hope. Maddie Scott, who is at this moment with leader Nancy Pelosi. She fights every day for reduction of gun violence and for forgiveness. Maddie is a messenger of the Most High. Maddie Scott gives us hope. Mayor Breed gives us hope. Commissioner Cheryl Davis gives us hope. Chief Scott gives us hope. They are each messengers of the Most High. You are a messenger of the Most High. We just need to remind ourselves that that's what we are. As a student of Jewish history, I know that just like Joseph, every time our people has found ourselves in a pit of terror, we have inevitably risen to a palace of possibility. Jewish history gives us hope. Academics and journalists like Anna and Ola Rosling, Steven Pinker, Nicholas Kristof, and others insist that in spite of the endlessly negative news cycle, the world is improving in ways that can be measured. Life expectancy continues to rise. Child mortality continues to fall. Global hunger has decreased. Education access has ridden, just as you said so eloquently, these don't make the front page of our papers, but they should. 
There have been major medical breakthroughs in diseases like AIDS and type 1 diabetes. Israel partnered with seven mostly Muslim nations to save the corals of the Red Sea. And if all that wasn't enough to give you cause for hope, Burger King introduced the first impossible plant-based Whopper. Burger King gives us hope. We look for it wherever we can find it. Last month, the Reformed Jewish movement gathered 5,000 in number and as Reverend Brown shared, voted to approve a resolution supporting the study of proposals of U.S. slavery reparations. We want to be your partner in fighting that fight, all of us. Now, why did a large Jewish group vote to get involved in the issue of reparations for African Americans? Well, in the Talmud, we learn that all people are descended from a single person so that no one person can say, my ancestor is greater than yours. In a traditional Jewish text called Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, it is written, God created humanity from the four corners of the earth, yellow clay and white sand, black loam and red soil. Therefore, the earth can declare to no part of humanity that it does not belong here, that this soil is not their rightful home is Jews. We have more that we can be doing to continue to show up for the black community. But I am proud of this step forward. Sacred Jewish texts like these dating back to the early centuries of the common era remind us they obligate us to be messengers of the Most High. I shared the start of Rabbi Kushner's poem and it ends like this, and I will end with this. Everyone carries with them at least one and probably many pieces to someone else's puzzle. Sometimes they know it, sometimes they don't. And when you present your piece, which is worthless to you, to another, whether you know it or not, whether they know it or not, you are a messenger of the Most High. Thank you. And now as we remain standing, Let's give it up again for Rabbi Beth Singer.